Hey friends, in this video I want to show you my new Vim config specifically for Laravel. Now Laravel is a web application framework that you can use to build all kind of web applications and it's a PHP framework and you need to have support for things like React or Vue or Inertia or even Livewire. Now for the longest time I always ended up using something like PHP Storm because it has the best support for this stuff. But in the last two weeks, I managed to configure my new Vim to work perfectly with it. And I even worked on a kind of custom plugin for Laravel that adds all the missing functionalities that I've always wanted in new Vim. Things like auto-completing um, views or configs or jumping directly to environment variables, um, you know, listing controllers, uh, triggering different artisan commands, and, you know, a bunch of other features. This plugin, I'll be sharing about it in the description, and it's really kind of comprehensive. There's a lot of things in it. I'll be showing you some of the functionalities in this video. Um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so to start, I did create a couple projects that will show you different flavors of Laravel. So one with Livewire, one with React, one with Vue, and one called Pink CRM, which is an existing project inside of the Inertia.js um, organization. It just shows you some of the Inertia work or how to use Inertia, essentially. And to start, let's start with React Laravel. And let's open this up, and then let me just go to Web PHP. And notice here that I'm using IntelliFence as my LSP. We have Pint as the formatter, essentially. And yeah, so this is like the default uh, code you get whenever you install Laravel with React. And I have pretty much didn't add anything just yet to this. So you see we have no controllers uh, or no custom controls yet or anything else. But if you see here in the JS, let's go to pages, for example, dashboard, you see here that, you know, we have some React code and yeah, we have even some Blade code here and so on and so forth. All right, so let's start with web.php and to show you some things. So here, for example, we have the completion with IntelliFence LSP and if we go to my dashboard.tsx, which is a uh, React code, notice that we also have the completion and some syntax highlighting and pretty much everything seems to be working just fine. Like if I go here, so I can quickly switch between different types of files, PHP to uh, TypeScript or JavaScript or whatever, and all everything seems to be working just fine. And if we go to this one as well, this is a Blade file. The syntax highlighting seems to be working, the injected ones as well for styling, for JavaScript. Pretty much everything you would expect to work is working in this configuration. Embedded JavaScript, embedded HTML, or embedded styling, all of it seems to be working just fine. Now, this is cool and everything, and if I, let's say, go back to here, let's show you one thing here. This is part of my kind of custom plugin. Notice here we have inertia render dashboard. So this is like a view in Inertia, essentially. If I do GD, I just jump to the dashboard.tsx. So I have kind of a way to know where to go. And this is one of the functionalities that I used to love in JetBrains and PHP Storm. And now I have it here. And here's some actually demo for my Laravel plugin. These are some of the things you would expect. So you can essentially run a bunch of artisan commands. You can go to controllers, you can make commands like essentially make a controller or make whatever in Laravel, go to models and so on and so forth. Let me show you some things here. So for example, if I go to a controller, this will list all the controllers available in this project and you can jump quickly to them, right? So I can go here, for example. And another one is, let's make a command. So if I press K here, let's say I wanna make a controller and I wanna call this posts controller. And if I go to posts controller, voila, we have it. And as you can tell, it's gonna be inside the controllers here. And yeah, so if I do, for example, a public function, notice that the completion is also working. This is using IntelliFence. Let's say index, if I can type correctly today, and then say, let's say return uh, view, and let's call this app, I guess. Voila, this is another thing I want to show you. We have auto-completion for the views. So notice here we have this Laravel thingy here. So I added like a source for Blink, and I think it also works with CMP. And now you have auto-completion for different views. So these things are available inside of our Laravel projects. These, I believe here, all these things are part of the Laravel installation, but this app one is also available for us. So I can do like this, and now I have it, right? 
So this is not formatted correctly, but I could, and I'm using Laravel Pint, so if I trigger formatting, it does it correctly for us as well. And if I go to app here, and I press GD, I jump to my view. So yeah, this is working pretty fine. And let me just go back, let's say web here and trigger my Laravel plugin. If I wanna go to routes, for example, um, this shows me all the available routes. Usually you can trigger this as well with an artisan command, but I add it here for just convenience. And you can go, for example, to the route files, whatever you want here, let's say auth. And yeah, there's a lot of functionalities that you will be able to see in my uh, repo here. Um, let's go back to my projects here and go to this view one and open it up. And let me just open up, let's say dashboard.view. This also works and notice we have Tailwind and View LS working. And you should be able to see like auto completion here and all that stuff. Same as, as like React, everything works perfectly fine. You could go to your web here and still kind of go back and forth. If I open up this one, for example, we also have support for CSS, this here. Yeah, so we have support for that as well. And if I go finally to my ping CRM. So let's go to ping and open this up. This is like a relatively bigger project. There's a bunch of other stuff in here. Or just all these things. So let's open up, for example, dashboard. So we're rendering a inertia file here. So if I press GD here, it jumped to the correct file, as you can tell. And it also used a different syntax. So the other one was like dashboard dot, now dashboard slash. It, it was able to understand all of that. And if I'm inside of a model here, let's say um, users, I wanna show you a couple of things in this plugin as well. So there's a lot of things happening here and I'm in the model, so I can do this and then I can show you some kind of model related things. So I have this show model relationships. If I press capital R, it shows you the available relationships in this model. I can also show you the attributes with capital A. So you can see the fillables and the hidden essentially like these things and these things. This would be useful if you're like all the way down here, for example, and you're working on something and you wanna see this stuff up there. Um, you can just do it that way. And this is all based on some of the workflows that I kind of go through. Uh, I develop these things to kind of fill my need, but I think it's useful. So yeah, if you go here and we can go down to some of the files. So we have like dashboard, as I said, you have users. And here's some JavaScript things as well. So just G normal JS, everything seems to be working. And yeah, hopefully this was useful. And let me show you one last project so we can go back up and then go to the Livewire one. This is a bit tricky because I don't think there's a kind of a good LSP just yet for Livewire, but if you notice here, this is like a Livewire component, xlayout.app. And here's some more things in here. So it's not perfectly working just yet, but there's some syntax highlighting kind of working. I'm still trying to get this part to work, but React, Vue, Inertia, everything seems to be working just fine. Um, all right, so let me just go to my NeoVim setup now, which is really the main story here. And I'm gonna show you how I did all of that. Let's start with my LSPs. So obviously I have this CSS LS, just uh, kind of the most used ones here. I have the HTML LS. IntelliFence, this is one of the main LSPs you can use. There's IntelliFence and there's PHP Actor. I like IntelliFence, I also paid for it. It's like $20 or something. One thing about IntelliFence with NeoVim, so you need a license key, and usually it's inside of like home directory IntelliFence license. Uh, if you install this using Mason, it will not pick it up by default. So I had to write this function that will pick up the license and kind of tell IntelliFence that we have a license. This way we can get all the functionalities we might need. Also for Tailwind, this is my Tailwind setup. I have the kind of the main Tailwind CSS uh, server, LSP. Most of these settings I found inside of the LSP config repo. It's not, it's not like I invented any of them, but they seem to work. For example, this part here will detect what file you're in and then try to tell you that this is like Tailwind and these will inject some of the auto-completion inside of my Blink CMP. And now we have this TSLS configuration, which is a TypeScript LSP. 
We have finally the view LS, which is a Vue.js specific one. Now I have this get TypeScript SDK, and the point of this is I wanna use the same kind of TypeScript installation because sometimes you have TypeScript installed on a project, sometimes it's global. Anyways, I use this kind of script here to detect that and make sure I'm always using the correct one. And yeah, we just run it and then we tell it to use this TypeScript um, SDK. Next, you're gonna have to enable these things. So if you go here, again, I'm using my mouse because I need to keep be pointing at things. We have this IntelliFence and I just activated the rest of them. And yeah, that's all I had to do to activate these things. And finally, I have my Laravel plugin right here. And this will add all the kind of Laravel specific functionality that I showed you earlier. And yeah, so if I go to, for example, a Next.js project, just to show you that some of the JavaScript specific things are working, not just Laravel. And if I open up, let's say page.tsx, notice here that we have this HTML LS working, the Tailwind working, the TSS LS working. So you can pretty much just use this also for your JavaScript projects. And yeah, everything seems to be working here. The auto completion and yeah, all the things. If I go back here, and open up uh, one of the projects. Let's say, let's go to the React one. Some interesting things here. I think I showed you this before, but one of my favorite things that I added here is support for even environment variables. So if I open up this, um, let's say app, notice that we have even support for environment variable to completion. I can do, for example, this. And if I do GD here, it goes directly to this one. So similar to, I think, PHP IDEA plugin. This work with the config. Let me just remember here. This works with the routes, with the views, inertia related things, configs, translations, environment variables, and so on and so forth. Also, this works with the global functions. So for example, auth request sessions, you can actually have uh, IntelliSense there. And yeah, this is pretty much the demo I wanted to show you. And again, it's not a lot of things. The main thing is that you need to have the correct LSPs, IntelliFence is my PHP LSP, uh, HTML LS, CSS as well. We got TSLS and Vue.js. And for the tree setter, I only added the PHP and Blade. We also have the Vue and I think React, which is TSX in this case. So yeah, that's all of the setup actually. Uh, I would assume this would be more complicated, but it wasn't actually complicated as much as I thought. Um, once you have your LSP set up correctly, specifically like the Vue.js one was a bit tricky. And I had to kind of uh, figure out this here and figure out how to do the TypeScript one. These were a bit complicated. I had a lot of conflicts between like the TypeScript and the Vue.js. Like essentially trying to support both React and Vue was a bit tricky. But with this setup, I managed to get both to work perfectly fine. And I think also the IntelliFence one was a bit tricky as well because for the longest, I couldn't figure out how to get the license to work, but then I found this syntax here and was able to get it to inject it correctly. So if I go to this web.php again, and if I open up LSP capabilities, notice here that most of these things are now available. I think there's like only two that are not, and these are provided by the Laravel Pint. But this is what the IntelliFence gives you, all these things. And if you don't have the license, you're pretty much just gonna get like a couple of them. I think it's worth it, so IntelliFence here, so it's not very expensive actually. So you'll get all these things kind of um, when you buy the license. And yeah, that's all of them. And that's my quick demo. And that's how I configured my Laravel installation. Everything will be uploaded. Everything is on GitHub. I'll leave links to everything. And you can just review if you want my new VIM setup to learn all about that stuff. But for now, I think I have a pretty solid setup. I don't really need to use PHP Storm for this anymore. Most of the th cool stuff you get out of the IDEA plugin is now kind of built in, kind of built in, and I'm still kind of working on it. So if you have more ideas you want to see in this plugin, just let me know. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.